What can we do when our last hope fails? That you must discover. Our last hope sailed this sea before you in search of an end to the beasts that have hunted us for generations. An end was found. Or so we thought. When the dragon rose into the sky like a phoenix, blazing in flames of agony. But our hero never came home. Only the storm. The beasts, the unshakable dread that something had twisted and turned. Your journey will not be easy. Storm swirls round the dragon's tower like a shroud. The dragon may be dead, but in its ashes, I fear something else has awoken. You will fight for every step. You must reach the tower. Learn what became of our warrior. Face what lurks within. When our last hope fails, another shall take its place. So long as we have breath. Hello and welcome to Remnant from the Ashes. Now, I know I've done a little bit of gameplay on this before, but that was the roguelite survival mode. And this time we're actually doing a campaign run. I figured since we have Remnant 2 coming out sometime in the future, might as well go through this game. And I like Remnant. I think it's a fun game. Interesting ideas. And it looks like the next game they're expanding on things and making some changes. Not even gonna fight anything since I don't think we have to. But yeah, this is a fun game. Using guns in a believable manner, unlike Bloodborne. Because why are you parrying with a blunderbuss at point blank range? But I really like Remnant. I think it was a really, uh, honestly, a bunch of cool ideas strung together, and Gunfire Games did a good job for what they had on hand.
in there. Hurry You're up, be Ellie. okay. We got company. Move. Move. You're awake. Hi there. Whoa, take it slow. You got hurt real bad. You don't want to start bleeding again, do you? I'm Wallace. I wanted to see you. I asked the commander if I could. Oh, Commander Ford and Mr. Riggler found you outside. They brought you here. But they said... They said Mark wasn't coming back. But he's... Was... Never mind. The commander said you should come see her when you woke up. She's in the room down the hall. She'll find a place for you. Everyone's got a place. I'll see you later. Yeah, this game is a bit different from a standard Souls game in that you actually get resources from breaking things and you don't lose anything on death. But I'll I'll have this stuff on screen. I'm not going to read it all out because there's a lot of lore in this game. But I'll have it up so you guys can read it. Yeah, there's a lot of journals throughout the game. I'm gonna be breaking a lot of stuff because scrap is money and you need scrap and then just like in Souls you need like a Titanite shard or similar thing for upgrades. Well, well, look who's awake. You put up quite a fight outside our gates. I'm Commander Ford. This is my base, and you, friend, are an unexpected guest. It's my job to know the kind of people I bring into Ward 13. We haven't seen a living soul on that shore for weeks. You will tell me why you were really out there, or we'll let the root have you. Hmm. No one has been in that tower in a very long time, but you've got no chance of getting there in this storm. Truth is, the ward has been cut off. We had to block the gates after we dragged you in. The root are everywhere. But, now that you're here, I have an idea. I'll tell you what, you want to leave? You'll have to do something for us first. 
First, we need power. That storm knocked out our reactor recently. With enough power, we might be able to activate another way out of here. The reactor is on the lower basement level. There's a stairwell that leads down to it. Get it running, then come back here. <laughs> Nothing around here is easy. Watch your back. We already lost a man down there a few days ago. I suspect the Root have found a way in. Go check in with Riggs. About your blade. I don't imagine your fists will do much against the Root. You do this for us, and I'll make sure you get out of here. Yeah, this game, it has the trappings of a standard Souls game, but I do not know if I would consider it a Souls-like. Because it has... It has healing items that recharge at checkpoints. You can summon help. But even then, the help you summon is different. Hey, I got my eye on you. Don't try nothing. For instance, I can't just put down a summon sign and be like, oh, if you're in this area, summon me. I have to go out into the main menu and then I will literally just hit browse multiplayer and I just join people's games. Which is actually something I have to kind of bring up. This game is going to feel very weird when we go through parts. Hey friends. The actors just through that door and down the stairs. Keep your wits about you. And what I mean by it's gonna be weird is I'm going to do what I always do and farm, because you have to in this game. The enemies the enemies are tough at times. Some of the fights you need every advantage you can get. What? Where the hell did you come from? You nearly scared the life out of me. No one else wandering around down here. Uh, you're not from around here, are you? Name's Ace. Ace Cotterill? You? That right? Well, you found it. Starting that relic could mean trouble, though. So, you ever start a reactor? Well, it makes a lot of noise, for starters. Lucky for you, it's just the press of a button on the terminal above us. Would have done it myself, but without knowing what might come sniffing around. With the two of us, though, maybe we got a chance. Okay, so I have an idea. You go upstairs and start the reactor. I'll help you kill whatever comes our way. You probably need a weapon, huh? Let's see if I can find you something. Okay, so I'm gonna go ex-cultist because the weapons are good. The mod Mender's aura is incredibly useful. The outfit is really good. I don't do scrapper. Not a fan of the melee build. And Hunter is pretty solid with Hunter's Mark, but I'm not doing a crit build. And I always play Ex-Cultist. It's, it's just too good. Because otherwise, to build up your mod ability, because it's a meter, you have to deal damage. But the Ex-Cultist outfit allows you to slowly regen it over time. There. That should improve our odds. Get up there and start the reactor. Oh, we don't get any of that stuff yet. Okay. Oh yeah, we don't get anything. But, since we have the time and I can continue my explanation, it's going to come off as weird because when you join other players, get up let's say I join up. someone, fine, I will move so that you can shut up. If I join someone and we go to... Let's say they're on one of the other locations, ROM, 
and we fight a boss. Instead of just the bo the host getting the stuff, everyone gets the items. So I would get the items and can make whatever boss weapon. So between episodes, I'm going to end up getting, other than just levels, I'm going to end up getting gear. And I'll try my best to explain where I get stuff, but I'm going to forget. Especially because a lot of bosses kind of blur together sometimes. And then... We can actually go over it here. So, instead of flat levels, what you get is trait points. So, in this case, we have three skills available. There will be a lot more. Some you get by beating bosses or by doing certain things. For instance, I think if you mantle through windows, I can't remember if it's 10, 50, or 100 times, but you get a trait that gives you, I think, stamina cost reduction. Yeah, it's got to be like 50 or 100 times. I'm not going to do it 100 times right here. But then that will appear in the trait section. Right off the bat, I'll tell you, Vigor and Spirit are your best choices to max out early on. There's a third best skill, but we haven't gotten to that area yet. But this will give you 50 HP. This will give you 25% mod power generation. And 50 HP when you currently sit at 100 and 50 is your next max. That's pretty good. Since it's just me, I'm gonna run my primary. Usually I run my pistol a lot, just because I try to leave primary ammo for other people. Because that's another big difference between this and a normal Souls game. Resources are not shared. So, if you kill a guy and he drops... It's a mix. Some things are shared, like scrap everyone would get 29 scrap. But primary ammo, if I pick it up, no one else gets the primary ammo. There is, I believe, a ring you can wear that shares it with other people wearing the ring. But people are greedy and never wear the ring. I do like the kind of post-apocalyptic vibe that these guns are just cobbled together. Remnant 2 looks to be a little more... Guns are more professionally made, which is fine. The other thing with summoning is players can join at random 
and as a result, you get some instances where people are AFK, and you'll join them, and they'll just not do anything, because you don't get summoned alive. choice sending you down here. You best go check in with Ford. Come visit my shop sometime, yeah? I'll make sure to give you the good in a fight discount. But players won't be summoned alive, they'll be summoned dead, and you have to go to a checkpoint to revive them. Which, another different thing, is the fact that your team can die and you don't get sent back to your world so you can keep trying a boss fight a dozen times, which I've done. And it's... Sometimes you get stuck with people who, try as you may, they just can't do a fight. It gets rough sometimes. Ooh! Luminite. That's always good. You need that to upgrade boss weapons and to make boss weapons. So in the end, there are a lot of similarities with, like, every other Souls game, but there are some sizable differences. You're risking a lot for folks you don't know, stranger. Ah, uh, yes. You're trying to get yourself to that little island, yeah? Word moves fast. When there ain't many words left around here. Listen, friend, uh, I know you don't know me from a can of paint, but I want to help. You, uh, you got a feeling of destiny about you. <laughs> You're going to save the world, ain't you? That's the spirit. Uh, here, I want you to have this. Not many people can keep the spirits out there in the world. An old fan told me this little bobble could keep you for death at bay. At least for a while. And if you're looking to buy other treasures for your travels, come see me. Ace has got her own space over there. <laughs> Between us, we got all sorts of treasures. But that stone there, free of charge. Take good care of it. Oh, one more thing. Ellen, uh, <laughs> Commander Ford, she knows more about that island than she lets on. Uh, ask her about the founder of War 13. She'll get you on your path. <laughs> Good to see a new face around here. Yep, explaining dragon hearts, which are just Estus flasks, but... Now, honestly, that one didn't take that long. Usually it feels like they take way longer. But I think that's just the stress of combat. A lot of bosses will summon, like, ads for you to fight. So very rarely are you ever alone. Glad to see you got the reactor running. <laughs> and I see Reggie gave you the dragon heart. <sighs> he wouldn't part with an artifact that powerful without a good reason. Ben. I imagine he said I could help you. Very well. Reggie may play the old fool, but his judgment is rarely off the mark. You've proven yourself reliable, stranger. I'm willing to help you get on your way. But I doubt you'll last long out there without help. Go see Riggs and McCabe downstairs. They'll fit you with better gear. Come see me afterwards. I could have skipped all this, but... It is story, and that's kind of the point here. Luckily, that's one nice part. A lot of the bosses, you don't need to 
know the story behind them. And also, another, another thing to mention is if you play this, your playthrough may not be the same as mine because the worlds are randomly genned each time you do a campaign or you do an adventure. Adventures are like mini versions where you'll get like two main boss fights. So it's something to keep in mind and Remnant 2 is supposed to be even more random gen which is cool but also kind of risky. I will say also this game I have it on normal difficulty. I don't really play on higher difficulties because I don't know what the point is and it just feels kind of moot to me. I would rather have difficulty be something that is naturally just kind of scaled or something you can trigger to increase or de decrease difficulty. You know, a bonfire ascetic or world tendency kind of stuff. What? Ford's gonna give my time to every stray who wanders in, and we're having words. I'm McCabe, I'm the engineer, and you're a pain in my ass. I'm not some scrap peddler, got it? I don't upgrade trash. All right then. Let's see what we're dealing with here. This'll help keep you on your feet, along with anyone else fool enough to join you. That's all you get for now. Get me more components and I'll make more. For a fee. Now get out of here. I'm tired of your yapping jaw. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of their lore just boils down to I'm angry because I'm alone here, everyone dead, everything sucks, the root is everywhere. Ooh, that's my stuff. Hey, it's good to see you on your feet again. Uh, welcome to Ward 13. I did what I could to patch you up. You seem like a tough one, though. <laughs> Name's Rigler. <laughs> Most everyone calls me Riggs. Well, your, uh, sword mm, was pretty banged up in the fight. Mm, not much I could do with it, I'm afraid. The blade was shattered when we found you. Mostly scrap metal at this point. Ford mentioned we should help you get sorted for the city. As a thanks for getting us out of a bind. Ah, maybe we can put your old blade to good use after all. Ah, let me look. Alright, so... Uh, yeah, let's upgrade the repeater first off. Because this is another thing. Your weapon mod scales to your weapon level. So if my repeater gets better, it will regenerate more HP and I think last longer. So in general, it's good to upgrade your gear. Except your melee weapons. Unless you have a melee weapon with an effect. They're just kind of moot. I'll upgrade it eventually over time. But I'm not really going into melee on people. All right, hey, now that's better. Oh, and uh, take this. It's not the strongest stuff, but more protection than what you've got. Ah, there you go. A bit sturdier. Every little bit counts out there. It's true. We don't have much, but you did right by us. Best we do right by you. If you need any weapon upgrades in the future, come see me. I bet Ford will see you fit to leave now. Here's hoping there's not an army of Deadwood waiting for you out there. Yeah, now we have... Our armor set with an armor set bonus of increases weapon mod duration by 100%. So now, as you can see, my Mender's Aura went from 11 seconds to 21 second duration. And mod power is generated slowly over time. The weapon mods are cool because they're effectively Ashes of War 
except you don't get the scaling differences or fancy like, oh, this is a fire weapon, so you deal fire damage. That's all... Like, the weapon mod itself might imbue your weapon with fire damage, and so on and so forth, which is a cool thing. Especially because... I should probably go over it, too. As you can see, the resistances, those are all our stats. So, bleed will reduce healing and cause... Da it's reduce healing by 50% and cause damage over time. Fire will set you on fire and burn you. You can roll to take chunks out of the meter so you burn less. Rot will make you cough, which will force you out of any animation. If you're reloading, you stop reloading. If you're running, you stop running. It sucks. And stuff like that, radiation, corrosive, shock, those are permanent. So until you go to a rest point or use a consumable, that effect will stick to you. Radiation reduces your stamina by 50%. Corrosive reduces your armor. Shock will make it so if you get close to another person with shock, you'll actually hurt yourself and the other person. And then frost or freeze will slow you down. And then it'll wear off and that's it. Good to see you more equipped. Riggs and McCabe do good work. I hope this will be enough to get you on your way. We can't leave by the gates now, but the founder, my grandfather, gave me this key years ago. He said we should only use it when there's no other choice. Well, we are out of choices. Considering you stuck your neck out for us, it seems fitting you do the honors. Take it. There's a terminal downstairs in the main room. Use the key there. With any luck, we can... Get the thing running. Oh. Uh, don't thank me just yet. Yeah, I'm not gonna ask about, like, oh, what if this explodes? Because it won't. What it is, is it's the big teleporter stone. It is the Stargate of this game. That's the easiest way to describe it. about it but I never saw it working this red eye might be our only door to the outside world now you want to get out of here this is your shot my grandfather was the commander before me they called him the founder of Ward 13 he brought everyone to Ward 13 when the root first attacked. He was determined to learn where the root came from. He spent so much time out there searching. Then one day, he didn't come back. I never knew what happened to him. There's a room just outside the ward. All his notes, any hint of where he went, it's there. If you want to reach the atoll, he may be the last one who knew how to get there. Listen, I know this has all been a bit rough for you. 
been rough for everyone. But you came through for us. For that, I'm grateful. You're welcome back anytime. Good luck. Hey, I got the band of accord. Nice. This everyone should really wear. Ammo acquired on pickup is increased by 25% per ally also wearing this ring and is shared. So don't be a dick, wear it. You share ammo. Number of people who refuse to wear it, I get it, it messes with your build, but it's helpful. We'll head to the Founder's Hideout. So the Root are an interesting enemy. They're effectively a... I'm trying to think of how to describe it. They're a parasitic tree or like plant species. Got the Ward 13 key card, that's useful. Oh, cool. This actually tells us about the labyrinth, which is useful to know about. The old church, yep. The tower. Yeah, so this kind of just tells you what's coming up. Dead root. This area is, of course, always here. This isn't one of the random gen locations. Further parts outside will be, but not right here. Oh, that's another cool thing, is some gear, when you pick it up, will actually be upgraded to plus one, plus four, plus seven, whatever it may be. So you can actually get decent gear as you're progressing instead of being stuck with brand new stuff. Before we head out here, we're actually going to head back to the ward because we got the key card, And there's a lot more lore and we might as well get it all kind of hammered out at this point and because one of the skills you can get is there and it's good to get it early
Might as well scoop up all the scrap. These are important. Tomas of Knowledge, that's a free skill point. That abandoned line will come back far later. And that one, if you didn't fully grasp it, what happened was the dreamers connect to different worlds and to the guardian of different worlds. And Casa's world ended up having creatures called the Fuzzies. And the Root invaded and killed them off and killed the guardian. To my understanding, the idea is that every world has a guardian, and if they don't have one, then they're vulnerable to invasion.
Yep, and by listening to that, we got a trait that's like really useful. Elder Knowledge. This trait is extremely valuable. Simply because every level is more XP, up to 20%. So 20% off every level, you get that early, you can snowball pretty fast. Pick up the fuse, because we need that. This whole facility was a testing area for dreamers. Yep, and then this guy was connected to the dreamer Kassa gets connected to, and he died. Okay, I couldn't remember if I had the key for that or not. Before we do that, I think the fuse box is somewhere around here. Or it's further in and you need the key to open that up. Which I'm thinking that might be the case, because I think I would have seen it and it wouldn't be in an office. Yeah, I think it's further ahead when we get a key later on. That's fine. At least we got all this kind of cleared. And we'll check out the giant melted hole here.
that's another thing, Clementine and Clawbone. That is another thing to remember for far later. Yeah, I guess we just don't have the key just yet. That's fine. That's not a big deal. But this all... This sets up a lot of lore. Which I do appreciate. It's nice having lore kind of available as opposed to within a bunch of item descriptions and then having them be very, very rough descriptions. Or does the fuse go down here? It does go down here. Yeah. Bandages help with the bleed buildup. Oil skin tonics will help with rot. Ammo boxes are really good. They restore all your ammo, so if for some reason you're out, you can always burn one. I don't usually use them because I don't need them, but the option exists. It's also nice being rewarded for breaking everything. And those skill points, that will pay itself off, because you can see the price gets higher. So, if you can knock 20% eventually off every trait rank, that's not bad. Then we can't continue through here because we don't have the key. Because that does stuff and we'll come back here later. But for the time being, that's the entirety of the ward. Because we can't do anything about that just yet. Because we have to, I think, use the other terminal to kill the power. Yeah, can I just... Oh, I guess I can just kill the power with that. Look at that, the Ward 13 Master Key. So now we can use that terminal. But we have to flick this switch, and we can go upstairs to that one door. We'll check if this Master Key works on this terminal, though. I don't fully remember. But this is a great way to get some gear starting out. Okay, yeah, so that doesn't do anything. Also nice not having to use stamina while running around here. The trait system I do think is really cool. It's not exactly what I had suggested for Elden Ring, which... As a reminder, what I had said was more of a feat system like D&D. Where it's a single thing you would rank up and it gives you a more specialized power. 
but I do think the trait system is a good kind of medium. Because it, it's a useful middle ground for what you can do in this game. Now we have a submachine gun. I'm not going to use it because the damage, even at max level, it doesn't come close to what a repeater can get to. And the submachine gun's better if you're doing like a crit build or something where sheer volume of fire is more valuable. But it is an option. And hey, if you didn't want this pistol, or whatever secondary you get from your class, now you can just swap it out. That's also another interesting thing for Remnant 2, is they're doing more of a class system. And I think there's like six classes, and you can pick whichever ones level them up, and then you can put that and a second class together into your own little hybrid which I think is pretty cool. I'm a little worried it's gonna kinda narrow down builds, but we'll have to wait and see how the game pans out. Oh, the subway entrance. If it's the boss I'm thinking I'm gonna have to farm. Not activating my weapon mod, it's a healing thing. Oh, looks like we got the weird tree. Ooh, item. I didn't know you could actually jump through those windows. Now I do.
Aggressor's Bane. That's... Okay, so that just draws aggro, but I take less damage. Not exactly what I want, but... It's whatever. That's another big thing. This game, a lot of rings are... They're very specialized. Like, you might get one that improves melee swing speed, but it reduces fire rate. I think that allows you to have more powerful items, because you're specializing a lot more. But it's, it's a matter of give and take. I don't think it would have meant much if they didn't have the shooting penalties, just because if you're playing melee, you're building entirely around melee in the first place. Or you're picking like very slow firing weapons. Like there's a pistol, it's a hunting pistol. It's a single shot handgun. Well, you don't really care about fire rate if it's single shot. Or in the case of like this shotgun, it's two shots. And it's actually the strongest starting weapon because the scrapper does get a shotgun, but it's multiple shots, so it fires a bit slower. Oh, there's our first big guy. Finally have an elite showing up. I will say, if you are looking for a Souls-like game, don't like the punishment of losing your souls on death, want something with guns, and want something that you can do co-op, this is the game. Because there's no hostile invaders, there's no PvP. You can team kill. I have to fl flat out say that you can team kill. TKing happens a fair amount. Okay, so we got one sewer entrance here. We'll come back to this. And I say we'll come back to that simply because there should be another dungeon on this end.
It's also worth searching all these buildings because sometimes items will drop in here. And even if, let's say you've searched every earth tile like three times over and you have every item, you get scrap. So, like I remember picking up, I think it was somebody found like a ring or something I already had. And because I already had it, I got like 400 scrap. That's easily a weapon upgrade or just really anything else. The cost of stuff is not bad in this game, and you can easily get more than enough money. But there are items, there's some rings that are like a hundred grand. He dodged so his buddy could take the first hit. Yep, and there is our other dungeon. But I'm going to call it right here. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit the like button, it helps out the channel a lot. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.